Hello everyone and thanks for attending this talk in the APS Virtual March Meeting 2021. This talk is a part of the session C21 on machine learning for quantum matter. So today I want to talk about deriving effective models for a particular class of quantum many-body system using machine learning techniques. The physical systems that we're interested in here are single molecule junctions for molecular electronics applications. The methodologies that I'll describe here are relevant to a general class of models known as quantum impurity models. A prominent example of this is the single molecule tr transistor that I've shown here on the slide. However, the applications extend to other kinds of systems as well, which are described by so-called quantum impurity models, for example, in the material science context of dynamical mean field theory. But before we get going, I want to emphasize that much of this work was undertaken by my very talented PhD student, Jonas Rigo, and my postdoc, Sudesh Nasen, who has actually just taken up a faculty position at IIT Darmbad. I also want to acknowledge uh, funding through the Laureate Programme of the Irish Research Council. The work that I'll describe in this talk uh, will be based on uh, this paper, uh, which appeared in Physical Review B recently, and also this preprint, uh, which is about to appear on the archive. OK, so first let me introduce the physical system and application as a motivation for this work. Single molecule transistors are one of the fundamental building blocks for molecular electronics. They comprise a single molecule contacted by source and drain electrodes with electrical transport properties controlled by a side gate voltage. A current flowing from source to drain in the macroscopic external circuit obviously necessitates electrons quantum mechanically tunneling through the single molecule. Conductance is therefore controlled by the molecular structure, the geometry, hybridization, chemistry, and so on. While incredible progress has obviously been made in scaling down and miniaturizing conventional CMOS-based transistors, truly to the narrow scale, single molecule junctions are certainly the physical limit of miniaturization. Furthermore, the physics is inherently quantum mechanical due to the quantum confined and strongly interacting molecular bottleneck in the circuit. This confers a possible quantum advantage with entanglement of states and quantum interference of current pathways potentially exploitable for applications. In addition, the functional components, the molecules themselves, are given to us for free by nature and have perfectly robust and reproducible chemical complexity. A single test tube would contain 10 to the 23 or so of these molecules. And indeed, the incredible diversity of different molecular motors means that device functionality is limited only by our ability to find the right molecule for the job. The problem, therefore, is one of rational design. We need to be able to understand the structure function relation for quantum transport through a single molecule junction. This necessitates being able to do accurate quantum simulations. But this is a famously difficult problem in quantum many body physics because of strong electron interactions on the molecule and hybridization of it to the 10 to the 23 conduction electrons in the leads. Typically, the modeling and simulation of such systems involves mapping the bare model with all of its microscopic complexities to a simpler effective model. The effective model must retain enough detail to capture the physics of interest, typically at a reduced temperature or energy scale, yet be computationally tractable. In the case of single molecule junctions, the effective models are generalized quantum impurity models and actually still require the use of state-of-the-art numerical methods to solve, but at least they are solvable. The electrical conductance properties can then be calculated. The quantum impurity models actually consist of a few strongly correlated local effective degrees of freedom, or local moment spins, coupled to fermionic reservoirs of lead conduction electrons. So the standard methodology typically involves using some ab initio methods for the molecule and a few hybridizing orbitals of the lead, and fitting parameters to an extended Hubbard model of active orbitals. Then using perturbation theory to map to an effective quantum impurity model. In this context, this mapping is called a Schrieffer-Wolf transformation. And then this model can be solved using uh, the numerical renormalization group or some other kind of numerical uh, impurity solver. So as a concrete example, let's consider the single benzene molecule transistor depicted here. 
the extended Hubbard model for the conducting pi system of the molecule is known with the effective parameters given by the so-called Ono parameterization. We basically have a six-membered Hubbard ring. We then use second-order perturbation theory to eliminate virtual excitations of the molecule states with one more or fewer electron than the ground state due to this tunnel coupling between the molecule and the leads. We then end up with an effective condo type model in the spin degenerate regime. In this case, if the molecule hosts seven electrons, then we have an overall net spin. And we write down an effective condo model for this local spin, hybridizing with the lead electrons. This model can then be solved to obtain the conductance as a function of applied gate voltage at different temperatures. In the figure here, I'm plotting as a color map the conductance as a function of gate voltage and temperature. Following the red arrow as indicated, we see that at sufficiently low temperatures, as I change the gate voltage over a narrow region, I see perfect transistor functionality, with the conductance collapsing from 2e squared upon h to zero. This is because of a quantum phase transition in the problem driven by strong electron interactions, and it's an inherently quantum mechanical effect. The problem with this approach is that it is indirect. We have to assume a separation of scales in the two-stage mapping, and this may not be physically justified. The method is also perturbative. Effective parameters, and hence the predicted transport properties, are only accurate in the limit of strong electron interactions. And we'll see later that this is actually a very severe approximation for real systems. And then one still has to completely solve the molecule to perform the mapping, which is only possible in the simplest of cases. And finally, observables in the effective model that we might be interested in are not actually guaranteed to match, as we'll see. One solution to all of this is to use machine learning techniques to derive better effective models. Our goal is to find the simplest model that captures the physical phenomena of interest using tools from machine learning. But what makes a good effective model? Well, we'd obviously like a simpler description that still captures the low energy physics that we're interested in. In particular, we want the low energy eigenspectrum of the Hamiltonian up to some cutoff to match in the bare and effective models. In principle, we can optimize the parameters of a given effective model by matching its density matrix to the density matrix of the microscopic model. Low temperature thermodynamics and emergent energy scales are therefore guaranteed to match in the bare and effective models if we match the density matrices. This contains all of the information in the system that we could need. Indeed, if we're able to match the spectrum of the density matrix, then we know we have the right effective model. We define the spectrum of the density matrix, Q of E, as being related simply to the density of states, rho of E, times the Boltzmann factors, e to the minus beta e. On the left hand side, I'm plotting some hypothetical density of states, rho of e, for bare and effective models, and the dotted line is the Boltzmann weighting. This then gives us the spectrum of the density matrix plotted on the right hand side. And what we'd like, of course, is that the spectrum of the density matrix, up to some cutoff, e cut, matches in bare and effective models. And we don't really care about what's happening at higher energies and temperatures. Optimizing the effective model so that the density matrix matches with the bare model is fine in principle, but how do we actually do this in practice? And how do we formulate this as a convex optimization problem with a well-defined gradient so that we can actually navigate through Hamiltonian space and find the right model? Well, one idea is to use the partition function we define Z as the integral over all energy of the density matrix spectrum, Q of E. The effective uh, model which has been optimized therefore must have the same partition function as the bare model if their density matrix spectra are to match at low temperatures. This then provides uh, a route to optimize an effective model on the level of the partition function so that the partition function of the effective model matches that of the bare model. However, two totally different arbitrary and unrelated models may accidentally have the same partition function 
even though they have totally different density matrix spectra. This is because the partition function is just a very crude object. It's simply the integral over this function. It's therefore possible to match the two partition functions uh, in models that are totally different and indeed have different density matrix spectra. So how do we deal with this? Here, we can actually exploit the renormalization group structure of the underlying quantum impurity problems. The parameters of effective models get renormalized as we go down in temperature, and the microscopic details become irrelevant to the low energy physics. On the right hand side here, I'm plotting the many particle eigenspectrum of the Anderson impurity model obtained by the numerical renormalization group as a function of iteration number. As we go to the right, this is basically going lower and lower in temperature. Initially, we see a very complicated eigenspectrum, which then becomes simpler as we go down in energy. This is a consequence of the uh, renormalization group flow in this system. This same RG flow is represented in uh, physical observables, which can be measured in experiment, as we see on the left-hand side. Here we see, as we follow the colored arrows, the flow of the conductance as we go down in temperature, which describes this uh, very nice RG flow diagram. We can now use this concept of the renormalization group flow to help us with our machine learning algorithm. In particular, we will define an RG derivable model as one which can be obtained from our bare microscopic model under the renormalization group transformation. These RG derivable models are obtained using our prior knowledge of the system. Obviously, these RG derivable models constitute a small subset of all possible effective models, but these are the ones that we're actually interested in. These are the ones that are obtained from a microscopic model under RG. Indeed, we'll only consider minimal models, which contain only the RG relevant and marginal terms. The important point is that the partition function is preserved under the RG flow. This means, therefore, that if we're trying to match our um, partition functions in bare and effective models, then when the partition functions match, because the partition function is preserved under the RG flow, this actually guarantees that we have the correct effective model. So because the partition function is invariant under the RG transformation, we know that the correct effective model will be the one that has the same partition function as the bare model. And furthermore, because we're only considering RG derivable effective models, that this uh, implies that the full spectrum of the density matrix will match in bare and effective models. And this is exactly what we want. Even though the partition function is a single number corresponding to the integral over the density matrix spectrum, because we're only considering RG derivable models, this single number is sufficient to capture all of the information about the optimization process. We therefore define an effective model H effective as the sum of operators little h i multiplied by their coupling constants theta i, and then we can construct an optimization loss function L of z, which is simply the difference in the partition functions squared. To be able to do a um, efficient optimization of our effective model, if we have a large number of tuning parameters, theta i, we need to know analytically the gradient of the loss function. And the nice thing here is that the gradient of the loss function takes this nice form involving the expectation value of the operators h i appearing in the effective Hamiltonian. Since these things can be computed or estimated, we therefore can know analytically what the gradient is, and therefore we can efficiently optimize our effective model so that the partition functions of bare and effective models match. Let's now apply this to the simplest non-trivial example of the mapping of the Anderson impurity model to the effective Condo model. The Anderson model is written here. We see that we have a uh, quantum orbital with level energy epsilon d and a local interaction u and a hybridization v to conduction electrons of the bath. The minimal RG derivable effective model is called the Kondo model. It involves the exchange coupling of a local moment on the impurity 
to the spin density of the conduction electrons. We can use our model machine learning technique to optimize um, the, uh, the single coupling constant J in this case uh, by matching the partition functions of the barren effective models. We should therefore implicitly find um, the dependence of the exchange coupling J on the bare model parameters epsilon d, u and v. Here I want to emphasize that if we restrict ourselves only to minimal RG derivable effective models, such as the condo model, then the search problem is strictly convex and we have only a single solution. We can converge to the optimized uh, solution exponentially quickly in our search space. As we can see on the left here, the partition function of the Condo model and of the Anderson model matches only at a single point in the space of our coupling constant J. Therefore, when we match the partition functions, um, we see that we have a guaranteed single solution for our coupling constant J. And this should be the proper effective model that we're searching for. A crucial feature of this methodology that I want to emphasize is that the optimization can be done at relatively high temperatures. This is very important because if we were to match the partition functions at zero temperature or very low temperatures, then this would imply that we'd have to completely solve the microscopic or bare model in order to derive the effective model. And of course, that totally defeats the purpose. In fact, that is not necessary. On the right hand side here, I'm plotting the machine learned effective J of the con condo model at temperature T versus its zero temperature value. On the x-axis, I'm plotting the temperature. The red lines show that you get excellent convergence to the zero temperature value for any temperature that's actually less than the interaction strength U of the problem. This is exactly as we might expect because um, we're only considering an effective condo model that retains the spin degrees of freedom. For temperatures much greater than U, um, we have also the charge degrees of freedom. They're simply not contained in the effective model, so we don't expect the effective model to be working for temperatures T much greater than U. However, for any T much less than U, we see that our effective model learning of the uh, condo exchange coupling J works very well. So we don't have to go to very low temperatures in order to do the optimization. In particular, we can do this all at temperatures much higher than the condo temperature. So here are the results. The circle points here are NRG data for the uh, Bayer Anderson model. If you use simply the perturbative Schrieffer Wolf calculation, then we get a, an estimate for the exchange coupling in the effective condo model, which overestimates the condo temperature. However, if we use the model machine learning technique by matching the partition functions, then we get a result where um, the condo temperature is exactly matched. In fact, for all T much less than U, we see the, uh, that the physical observables, in this case, the entropy as a function of temperature, matches perfectly in bare and effective models. This can also be done in much more complicated systems for example, the benzene single molecule junction that I motivated at the beginning of this talk. And further information on that uh, can be found in the talk by Sudesh Sen in the session R21. In this case, we have a much more complicated system, but it reduces to a single spin half condo impurity coupled to two leads at the lowest temperatures. And by matching the partition functions, we're able to obtain the effective J of this system, which gives us the correct TK. However, this optimization on the level of the partition function certainly does have its limits. The problem is that for many systems of interest, the approach is just too crude. It is too simplified. We boil down all the information in the density matrix into a single number, the partition function. In fact, the method only works for minimal RG derivable models. And indeed, the solutions for other types of models may not be unique. This is obviously a problem. We have to use prior knowledge of the form of the effective models, and we can only use RG-derivable minimal models. 
This is because if we use more general models, which have RG marginal or irrelevant terms, then this tells us that the partition function would actually be the same independently of those coupling parameters. And therefore we can't use these parameters to further optimize our effective model. This is actually important in cases where, for example, we have potential scattering in the problem, which might con control the quantum transport or conductance. This is actually the case in the benzene single molecule junction that I showed you. We were able to capture certain observables, for example, the flow of the entropy and the condo temperature, but we're not able to reproduce the potential scattering and therefore properties such as the conductance. Optimization of the effective model on the level of the partition function actually does not guarantee that physical observables match in bare and effective models. As a good example, let's consider again the mapping of the Anderson model to the Condo model. On the right hand side here, I'm plotting the expectation value of the spin spin correlation in the Anderson model and the Condo model. I'm plotting this as a function of the interaction strength u. And we can see that the correlation only agrees in the large u limit. As we go to smaller interaction strength u, we see that the spin-spin correlator in the Anderson model and the Condo model simply do not agree. To reproduce the value of these observables, we actually need to inc include also the RG marginal and irrelevant terms. A corollary to this, of course, is that if we were to perform uh, machine learning on the level of the observables alone, then we don't guarantee to obtain the correct low energy physics with the correct condo scales and the correct spectrum of the density matrix and so on. To overcome these problems, we need to develop a new methodology. We wish to utilize the full information in the density matrix somehow and in a computationally tractable way. We would like to use the density matrix as a proxy for the Hamiltonian construct from it an effective probability distribution, and then use concepts from information geometry for the optimization. Here, we have a bare Hamiltonian and an effective Hamiltonian. For each of them, we formulate a density matrix rho hat. These are, of course, related to the original Hamiltonian operators. In the case of the density matrix of the effective model, the, the density matrix is also to be parameterized by the effective coupling constants, theta. We use concepts from information geometry for the optimization. We basically want a way of measuring the distance between our two Hamiltonians. We can do this by measuring the distance between our two density matrices. This can be done using the kullback leibler divergence, or the KL divergence. We have two probability distributions for the bare and effective models, and we wish to compare the distance of one to the other. We optimize the effective model parameters, theta, by minimizing the KL divergence using gradient descent in the usual way. However, to be able to do all of this, we need to be able to represent the thermal density matrix as a classical probability distribution, P of X. This is done here by expanding the partition function using a continuous time perturbation expansion in the usual way. P of X is therefore to be understood as a distribution of Feynman diagrams X with weights WX. Using the usual techniques of expanding the partition function, we can obtain an explicit form for the WX. It involves some factors multiplied by a Boltzmann weight for a particular diagram evaluated in the impurity Hamiltonian. We therefore have a classical distribution P of X of diagrams X with weights WX that are distributed according to the impurity Hamiltonian. And this is precisely an energy-based distribution. It can be approximated with limited data by sampling diagrams using, for example, CTQMC. The nice thing is that again, this optimization problem is strictly convex and the exact gradient can be expressed in terms of physical observables. If I have an effective Hamiltonian H hat here, again parameterized in terms of some coupling constants theta i times some operators H of i, then we have a corresponding probability distribution of diagrams P of x. We can then compare the P of x for bare and effective models 
using the Kullback Leibler divergence, the gradient of which can then be related simply to the difference in observables of our operators hi. Notice here that in the bare model, we have to project out the uh, states that don't exist in the effective model, which of course typically involves a, a smaller number of degrees of freedom. So to optimize our effective model, um, we want to find the minimum in the uh, KL divergence. And this of course arises when our, part, when our um, observables, our physical observables match. I emphasize here that these are not just any old physical observable, um, but are really the observables corresponding to these operators hi, which appear in the effective Hamiltonian. So as a proof of principle, let's consider again the Anderson to Kondo mapping. The Anderson model at a half filling is again specified here, and we're going to map it to a generalized Kondo model. This first term here is the usual Kondo spin-spin exchange, However, I'm also now introducing an extra RG irrelevant term, which is an interaction in the bath. This extra term here would not have been treatable using our uh, partition function method because this is RG irrelevant, and therefore the introduction of this term actually um, does not change the, uh, the partition function. In this case, therefore, we don't have uh, an RG derivable minimal model, but rather a model with some extra terms. These extra terms will actually help us um, satisfy simultaneously the uh, condition of uh, the, the matching of our low energy physics and our condo scale and our low energy spectrum of the density matrix, while simultaneously allowing us to capture the behavior of physical observables, as we'll see. So the mapping of the Anderson model to the extended condo model looks like this. On the left-hand side, I'm plotting the J and the U0 effective parameters uh, that I had on the previous slide as a function of the interaction strength in our bare model, and we can see that they take on some non-trivial behavior. On the right-hand side, we use NRG to solve the effective model and compare it back to our original model as a proof of principle. Here, we see that the condo temperature for the, the bare um, Anderson impurity model, um, which is this, uh, this blue line here, takes some specific form as a function of our interaction strength u. And for our effective model, we have a rather good approximation to this. Indeed, if we look at physical observables, for example, the entropy plotted in this inset here, we see that the TK is very similar and that the behavior of the physical observables as a function of temperature agrees very well over all temperatures considered. Obviously, we see uh, a breakdown of the, uh, of the approach at very small u. Here, we'd have to include some additional perturbations into our effective model to be able to capture these effects. So finally, let me conclude. I've shown that complex microscopic models of single molecule junctions can be mapped to simplified quantum impurity models using these machine learning techniques. In particular, we can set up a classical energy-based distribution obtained by expanding the partition function. This classical energy-based distribution is nothing other than a distribution of Feynman diagrams, which can, can be compared in the uh, bare model and the effective model. We can then use the KL divergence to compare these two distributions. Minimizing the KL divergence gives a stringent condition on matching observables. And again, this is a strictly convex optimization problem which means that for all problems, there's a single global minimum and we can efficiently find that minimum. Again, let me emphasize that all of this can be done at relatively high temperatures, which means we don't need to completely solve the bare model to find the valid effective model. The effective model is of course simpler and can be solved using other methods. Importantly, because we've devised a strategy based on physical observables, we can actually do the optimization directly from an, uh, a microscopic model of quite some complexity using, for example, QMC to estimate the observables, and then simply do cheap optimization runs on the simplified effective model to match those observables to find the best effective model. And this strategy goes beyond and improves upon the previous partition function matching technique. 
in forthcoming work, we'll be applying this to realistic models of uh, molecular junctions, and it'll allow us to find uh, realistic approximations uh, to the effective quantum impurity problems, which can then be solved using the numerical renormalization group to deduce the quantum transport.